Hey there, Lou from RV Habit. Today I have a King Falcon Wi-Fi set for my RV. And what's cool about it is it comes with a Wi-Fi Max router and it comes with a Yagi type directional antenna that goes on the roof instead of an omnidirectional antenna. But what's truly amazing about this one is it is completely automatic. Through a phone app, this will automatically turn, find the strongest Wi-Fi signals and lock in on it. No more manual adjusting the antenna. Everything is done automatically. It's the only one I know that's on the market like this. So the first thing we're going to do is unbox it, see what's uh, included, and then we'll head up to the roof to install it. So I have it all unboxed and it's actually only a few parts and it, it seems really uh, simple to install. So you have the outside antenna that's going to be mounted to my roof and <clears throat> it's going to come in with this provided cable. The cable connects from the outside antenna, comes into your RV and will connect to this power inserter. From the power inserter, this small cable here will connect to the Wi-Fi Max. And that's really it. So one cable in connects to here and then this connects to the Wi-Fi Max and they give you a power adapter for the power inserter and a power adapter for the Wi-Fi Max. Seems really simple. So first thing is I'm going to get up on that roof and see where this fits best. Now remember when you put this up, this turns by itself so you're going to have to give it enough room that when it turns it doesn't hit any other objects on the roof. So we're on the roof and this is my refrigerator vent and if you've seen any of my other videos I love to use this as a chase way into the RV and that's just what I've done here with the included antenna wire. Taking this off I'll spare you the details of how I did it but I just used this as a chase way to get into my utility closet inside. Now I will say you have to do some prior planning here. You're going to lay out everything before if you have to drill holes because it appears there's only 11 feet of cable that they give you. And that includes what you're going to need inside to get to the power inserter. So there's some layout that's going to need to be done. It is clearly marked. There's two different ends on this antenna wire. The red one is goes to the roof and it actually has a sticker on it that says roof and the black one goes inside so you're running it in the right direction. Now, this is all I have left. I'm going to figure out exactly where I can fit this on my roof as real estate up here is at a premium with the air condition, a satellite and some other things. So we'll do that and then we'll, uh, we'll switch spaces and get this antenna installed. Okay, so based on the length of this wire and what I have available I'm thinking I'm going to put this right about here. Now the instructions say you do not want the, any part of the antenna hanging off the RV and you have to make sure that this antenna can turn freely without hitting any objects like your air condition or vent. So you need to make sure that this antenna isn't obstructed by anything. There's also a spot for the antenna to come out after you connect it. That is to face the rear of the coach. And I'm going to bring you in closer actually how to connect this wire to the antenna because it looks a little tricky. Okay, so what it says is we want to come in through the back where that slot is and we're going to, let's take this red cover off so we expose the antenna. We're going to come underneath the circuit board and kind of get that under there. Now the trick is it says you don't want to touch the circuit board. And I'm, I'm assuming that's because people will bend it. It'll crack the solder welds or something. And once you get it through here, there we go. Now, we're gonna come around and it's gonna make a bend, as you can see get onto that antenna. And there we go. And we're gonna push that and that'll lock on there. And we want to give that plenty of room. And that's it. Now this will go in the back. 
and that'll tilt up just like that. Perfect. Let me lay this wire and I'm going to figure out exactly where I want this before I glue it. So I, I figured this is the best place for this. Uh, this does not overhang the RV like they said and it has enough room to turn 360 degrees without hitting any obstructions like the uh, roof air condition. So I've traced an outline so I know where to put it back down. Now what I'm going to do is just flip it over and it says to put a bead of roof sealant around the entire base. Now if anybody's ever worked with die court they know this is a messy messy proposition. So I'm going to slowly do this. Probably put it in here between my legs. And then we'll flip it over and put it on there. Okay, I suggest not going crazy with the die core underneath. Like I said, it can get pretty, pretty messy. So I just want to double check my antenna is in good shape. I'm going to lay this this way. And I'm going to put that right down where I traced. And I'll just give a little push. And now we're going to screw it down. Now it, it says you have to supply the screws. Never, none of this equipment that you buy for the RV comes with fasteners to attach it to your roof. You have to do the research of what fastener works best for your roof. Now I have a fiberglass roof and I found that Craig 1 inch coarse thread screws work excellent attaching stuff to this roof. So that's what I'm going to use, a square tip Craig coarse thread screw, it's one inch. And they do hold well. That's not going anywhere. So now once the screws are in, I'm actually going to fasten this cable and then I'll die core around the entire base and the screw heads. The next thing I want to do before I do anything else is fasten this cable to the roof. Now I have little square plastic things that stick to the roof and then you put a zip tie through it. Uh, I find they don't really stick to the roof too well. Eventually they come up. What I have found is some Eternabon tape. This stuff here. If you cut them in strips, peel the back off and just stick it to the roof over the cable just like that. And I'm going to tell you what. I've had stuff on here three years with that. It does not move and it does a great job at holding the cable down. It's a lot better than those little tabs that you put the zip ties through. Those tend to pop off. The turnabon tape never pops off. So that's it. Uh, I've die cord around the base. I've hit the screw heads so there's no water penetration. I've attached the antenna wire to the RV roof with some Eternabon tape about every 8 to 12 inches where it needs it. And that was it. So run the cable up, attach it to the antenna, mount the antenna, and die core. Couldn't be easier.
and clean up this mess up here and we'll go down we'll make the connections below so what we're looking at in here is my utility closet this is behind the radio yes don't let the wires give you chest pains all the wires from my roof come through here all the TV wires it is a mess it's pretty typical of an RV but what I have in here now is I have this wire here this is from the antenna on the roof that's run into this cabinet I have this small wire this is the wire that's going to connect to the Wi-Fi Max router and then I have this wire that's the power wire for the power inserter so here's the power inserter I've labeled it and the antenna connections are different so you can't confuse them so one end goes there and then take the cover off this and we'll attach this here and that just simply screws on hand tight only don't use a wrench and then the power is not connected yet but we're gonna plug in where the power goes and that's it and we'll let that sit back here so this space here is right above all those wires that we just saw and I've run that little antenna wire from the power inserter up here and I'm going to connect that to the Wi-Fi Max router and that goes right on the side. Just screw it on. Again, hand tight. Do not use a wrench. And then Again, it's not plugged in, but this is going to be the power wire for the router. So that's all done. We'll run the wires in here and get this connected up. Okay, we're going to do the one-time setup for this. What we need to do is set up a private network on the Wi-Fi Max router. We have to do that before we do anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Google Play Store or the Apple Phone Store um, if you have Apple. You're going to search for King Wi-Fi and then you're going to install King Wi-Fi. I already have it installed. Now, before you open it, what you want to do is you want to turn on airplane mode on your phone and that will turn off your cellular and your Wi-Fi. It's going to turn off everything. But you want to turn off your cellular service when you do this. Then you can go into your Wi-Fi settings and you're going to see two networks labeled King. One will have a King and a few numbers and one will have King a few numbers and 5G. You can connect to either one. If you're not sure if you have 5G, just connect to the regular King with the several numbers. What that'll do is let you connect to the router directly from your phone, but again, you can't have the cellular service on your phone on. Okay, so we'll back out of that. We're gonna open the King Wi-Fi app. It's asking to turn on Bluetooth, allow it. going to click get started and again this is a one-time setup you're only going to need to do this once what we're going to do is name our router uh, with a network name we want and give it a password so it says Wi-Fi Max setup please configure your Wi-Fi Max network name we'll click OK And you're going to see some options here and it'll say internet status okay we're going to go down to the third one here and click Wi-Fi settings and then we're going to click Wi-Fi name and password so right now it's named King and King 5G what we're going to do is change the names to whatever you like
encryption, you're going to choose the one that's recommended, WPA, WPA2, PSK. And then you're going to type in a password. Now you have a 2.4 gigahertz network and a 5G network. Set them both up. You can name them different uh, names. You could use the same password, it doesn't matter. But what you want to do is you do want to leave 5G on there so you can identify it. I'm going to name it the same name, but I'm going to leave 5G on there to identify the 5G network. So it's actually two different networks. Again, you're going to use the recommended security and again give it a password. Double check everything is correct. And click save. Now it says once it saves, what's going to happen is your phone's going to disconnect because remember we are connected to the name King Wi-Fi. So what we want to do is go back out. Click back on your Wi-Fi and now you'll see I named it Mobile Man Cave so now I'm gonna see that network and make sure I'm connected to it. You also see Mobile Man Cave 5G go back out go back to the King app okay so the Wi-Fi Max is set up again this is a one-time procedure now the router is set up now, antenna pairing to Android device. That's our next phase. And as you can see, it looks and it's saying one device found. It shows KSA 01874. Now, if you had more than one showing, you're picking up another King Falcon antenna, which is highly unlikely, but if that's the case that number is actually on the antenna. So I'm going to click on that so we can connect to it. And it says enter your four digit pin. Now the default pin is 0000. zero, zero, zero. And on the next screen it will give you an opportunity to change it. I don't want to change it. I'm going to hit cancel. Antenna pairing to Android device is set up. So that's the initial setup and installation. You do not have to do that setup every time. Now the Wi-Fi Max router is set up. The King antenna is uh, linked to your phone and you could link it to your phone, your, your tablet, your uh, laptop, anything you want. It links by Bluetooth. Just remember that uh, you can only have one device connected to the King Falcon antenna at a time. So if you're using your tablet, you can't have it try and link your phone to it at the same time. Now the Wi-Fi Max, that runs off Wi-Fi, and uh, that's going to have your personal network. And if you're using any public network, especially a campground network, you want to have a personal router in your RV that all your devices connect to your personal router, not that each device has to connect to the Wi-Fi at the campground. So I just want to show you, you pull into a campground, what you're going to do. So I'm just a guy with a laptop and an inflated self-image. So you're going to open your phone. You're going to make sure your Bluetooth is on. You're going to make sure your Wi-Fi is on and connected to your personal router network, the Wi-Fi Max, whatever name you gave it. Just go into your King Wi-Fi app. and it's connected and it'll show you no network connected you're going to click scan and the antenna i don't see if you can hear it it's actually doing a 360 degree rotation and it's looking for all available networks every couple inches and 
we'll let that go already. It's found 14 available networks. Okay, it just stopped uh, turning and as you can see on the phone here, it says select the internet you would like to use. So it found, I, I think it said 18 networks available to me. I'm going to click OK and it's going to show you all the available networks. Now just remember, you'll see at the top it says Mobile Man Cave. That is the personal network that I have set up on the Wi-Fi Max in this RV. You don't want to pick that that doesn't have internet that's going to have internet to what we connect to. So it's always going to show you your your router's name because it's actually transmitting. So you want to go and you can pick any of these that are available. I'm going to click on this one. It's going to remember where it found that network and it's turning the antenna towards that network. And it'll zero in exactly in the best spot for reception. And once it does, this arrow here is going to turn green with a check mark. There it is. And I'm going to click done. Click continue. And when you get back to the main screen, it's going to show you that the King Falcons connected to that network. You click these three dots in the upper right hand corner. King Wi-Fi Max setup. Now we just want to tell the router to use that network. So we go to the third option below and it's uh, Wi-Fi setup and you go to wireless repeating and what it's going to do, it's going to show me all the networks in that small cone that this antenna is pointing to. You look for the network you told the King antenna to zero in on, it's the first one. And if it has a password, you need to enter the password and click save. Now, your router is going to reboot to save all those settings. And that takes about two or three minutes. And that's it. So the router will reboot. If you have trouble connecting to your router, make sure because it didn't reboot that your phone reconnects to your router's name. Sometimes you'll get disconnected because the router's rebooting. And that's really it. So pros and cons. Uh, just a few of each. And again, I've only played with it a week, but uh, two of the big cons I had was they only give you 11 feet of cable to go from the power inserter to the King Falcon antenna on the roof. Uh, I would have appreciated maybe like 14 feet give you a little bit more options 11 feet is somewhat restricting to where you're going to be able to mount this uh, and have enough cable to come into the power inserter also the the antenna that goes from the power inserter to the Wi-Fi max that's only two feet three feet would have been better and uh, the other con which is probably the biggest con is it uses 110 uh, electricity converts it to 12 volt and 9 volt to power the power inserter and the Wi-Fi Max. This for an RV really should have 12 volt plugs that you can just plug in either to a USB or to a cigarette lighter adapter. Uh, that's definitely uh, a con. Now I have satellite TV, my TV's 12 volt, everything's 12 volt except my uh, satellite receiver and I use a small inverter in that so actually I plugged in the Wi-Fi Max to the power in inverter. Um, but those are really the only two cons I have so far about this system. Uh, pros, installation, a breeze. I mean, it, it could not be easier. The hardest part, as always, is getting the antenna cable from the roof into the RV. I always use the Chaseway in my refrigerator because I have a utility closet right next to it where I keep all my electronics. So that is super, super easy for me. Um, Pros, now, the Wi-Fi Max, the router, it's phenomenal. I, I had another router in here, and the Wi-Fi Max blows it away. What's nice about it is it transmits in 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. And I did some speed tests, and the 5 gigahertz is at least, always, 
twice as fast. Now what's nice about that is I have Fire Stick on this on this television. I can connect this to the 5 gigahertz and get the faster speeds. Um, I, I tend not to use 5 gigahertz if I'm on my phone because when you're outside the, the RV sometimes you'll have a hard time reception. 5 gigahertz does not travel through walls well so I always use the main 2.4 gigahertz and you really don't need anything faster on your phone. Uh, now the Yagi type antenna is phenomenal. It really goes out there. I, I tried some different uh, Wi-Fi locations that I know are pretty far out there and it does do really well. If you don't want a directional antenna, they do sell an omnidirectional antenna called the Swift, uh, but that doesn't go out as far. That just kind of does a cone in a circle. Uh, this type of Yagi is really um, zeroes in and can go a far distance to pick up the Wi-Fi signal. And it picks up a good strong signal, which means you're getting good speeds. Now you're never going to get a faster speed then the Wi-Fi that you're picking up is transmitting. If it transmits at 50 megabytes per second, that's all you're going to get ever. You're not going to—it's not going to increase the speed. Um, but the true pro of this is it's automatic. I mean, you go on your phone, you've seen it. It literally takes five minutes. It does it all automatically. Zeroes in on on a Wi-Fi signal. You select it, and you're done. Uh, I just—it's amazing. I mean, usually if you have to have a Yagi antenna, first you have to know where the Wi-Fi is being transmitted and then you have to play around with it to get the best signal manually. This does it all automatically, can't be beat. Uh, I'll test it for a little bit longer, but as I've said, I've used it for about a week so far and it's worked phenomenal. Um, and again, if you're using Wi-Fi in your RV, you should at least have the Wi-Fi Max or another type router that has a personal network that's secure so you you don't want to go to a campground and every single device you use on Wi-Fi has to connect to the campground Wi-Fi you want to have one device like my fire stick it's always connected to the Wi-Fi max no matter where I'm getting the internet from so other than that uh, I appreciate you watching don't forget to subscribe if you like this video give me a thumbs up and I'll see you soon